Mel here, how are you guys doing? Some of the most interesting pieces of tech, in my opinion today, are eGPUs, like that Razer Core X back there. These things are absolutely fantastic pieces of hardware. They add more graphics power to your setup, grant you upgradeability to systems that are closed off like laptops or all-in-ones or small form factor machines like the Mac Mini over there. And yes, it's still a solution that appeals to many, many people, especially the upgradeability part. Despite the promise of a plug and play hassle-free experience, that reality unfortunately doesn't happen to everyone or all the time. So today, that's what we're addressing. Let's talk about the state of eGPUs. After this message from our sponsor though. In today's world of social distancing and isolation and quarantine, one of the worst things ever to do, which is sign stuff, has kind of become even more annoying. And let's face it, it's dull to the point of, oh my God, most of the time, right? You need to print everything and you don't necessarily have a printer at home that you're used to, or maybe you have to even buy one. And then you have all those pages that you need to sign and mark and then scan everything back up just to send to someone else. Now that, that's, uh-uh, that's a no. Not to mention the fact that it's not very green as well. All that paper, yeah, definitely not green. Here is where Sign X from Wondershare comes in. It's a free application that lets you digitally sign any type of document and with legally binding signatures because it complies with the most demanding regulations from a bunch of countries worldwide. It's fast and simple to sign and send stuff. It's got a ton of free templates for different contracts and arrangements and agreements that are reusable and customizable. It's got multiple user support. You can send documents in bulk to a bunch of different recipients. There's encryption and password protection and real-time notifications for when a document is either opened, read, or signed that is displayed to you in a dashboard that's also obviously, you know, updated in real time. It's got the same awesome wide range of support options as any other Wondershare product. So if you actually need a hand, it's pretty easy to just, you know, ask for help. And again, it's totally free up to the limit of five documents sent per month. But if you need more than that, or you just want more features, you can always grab yourself a premium account with an unlimited quota of documents to send and a bunch of other perks. This is basically a no brainer because everybody signs stuff at one time or another, and you're bound to basically do that again in not too long a time. So check the link down below in the description to learn a bit more and start your free trial today. So quick history recap. Back in 2016, when eGPUs became a thing, at least for the mainstream gaming market, spearheaded by the original Razer Core, the engineering that made all that possible was obviously met with cheers because it was awesome. But Razer themselves pointed out back then that support for this technology would greatly depend on both hardware manufacturers actually putting in the hardware to take advantage of this and software being able to work with and play nice with these external graphic solutions and all of the connections going on to make it happen. Resource allocation management would be extremely important for the whole thing to work. Years go by, support becomes more widespread, with Apple, funnily enough, being one of the ones with the most seamless integration, really. Once macOS officially supported eGPUs, with AMD cards obviously, because Apple and Nvidia, they still can't look each other in the face, it's a beautiful thing. Now, as I've jumped on board full-time in the beginning of last year, both Windows and macOS, to a certain extent, had already gone through a phase where, despite being officially supported, compatibility issues were extremely common with basically every card, especially AMD ones, on Windows. But things got better over time, to a point where almost nothing weird happened and integration seemed to be close to perfect or as close to perfect as it would ever get. From there, eGPUs started to really blow up, especially for Mac users fond of the idea to be able to boot into Windows with that extra, you know, graphics up, it, up their sleeve, you know, a little bit extra horsepower, which means people who have Mac systems and want a game, obviously, like, let's be honest. And since Mac OS and Windows officially support the thing and we are supposedly past the point where compatibility issues plagued the tech, it should have been easy peasy lemon squeezy, but not all that should actually is. You see, one of the issues I mentioned that happened in the past was related to Windows effing up resource allocation for devices, meaning that your eGPU was connected and being seen by the system, but left without enough juice to actually work. That is called error 12. 
Now granted, this isn't a new thing that came along with eGPUs, it has existed for a long time, but if you're a Mac owner that has an eGPU, chances are you've been experiencing a really bad run of problems with Error 12 since August of last year give or take a little bit. Now, most people relate that to the release of Catalina, as Apple doesn't officially support eGPUs through bootcamp. And there are plenty of people and tutorials that tell you why and how to downgrade your macOS back to Mojave in order to fix the issue. But still, none of that is guaranteed, by the way. I've been experiencing and documenting this issue myself, and there are fantastic compilations of do's, don'ts, what ifs, questions and answers that can shed more light into the whole processes and the troubleshooting for this rat's nest, all at the forums at egpu.io, links down below in the description, of course. But one thing that became very apparent to me while pulling in from all the different sources together was this is not a macOS or an Apple II chip problem, at least not alone. And I say this because as an early adopter, even though people told me not to do it, as soon as Catalina became available, I jumped straight in. And guess what? Yes, a couple of apps that I use stopped working, but nothing that going through terminal doesn't fix. And my overall experience with Catalina has both been great since launch and it did nothing to my bootcamp system. I kept on running Windows, kept on playing too much Overwatch, testing a couple of games here and there, everything was working just fine with no issues at all until windows 10 version 1909 came along and that's for me since many have reported issues dating back to 1903 and before anyway summarizing my experience none of the methods tested by the great brave souls at egpu.io worked for me either alone combined in different orders upside down squat and some of those troubleshooting processes are actually potentially dangerous to your system as well, with many having pointed out that not only did they not fix the issue, but as something went wrong in the middle of the process, they basically lost everything because their drives were completely corrupted or erased or something like that. This is why I've decided to make a video on the matter, because consumers need to be made aware that this is happening. I am thankfully fortunate enough to be able to grab a spare Windows notebook that works with an eGPU so that I can use at least part of my system for my gaming needs, but that doesn't mean I'm fine with it. And in fact, the laptop I'm referring to, which is a Blade Stealth 13 inch, also had issues with error 12 that thankfully were countered, but only by going through a lengthy troubleshooting process that one, isn't available for every machine, and two, had chances to screw everything up. Not only not fixing the issue, but breaking the actual laptop. This is a problem and we need to demand action from both Apple and Microsoft. To be as fair as I possibly can, this does seem to be an issue with Windows since its update past version 1809 or 1903. So Microsoft, you guys have a lot of work to put into this thing to make the whole thing go away. Apparently, a couple of new builds that you guys have been working with in beta already fixed the issue, but since it doesn't do it for everyone or all the time, the fix is probably an unintended side effect of something else you've been tinkering with. So, put in the hours now and make it happen, like on purpose. And Apple, you guys could chime in here as well. Fully supporting eGPUs through bootcamp is probably like really low on your list of priorities, but here's something you could do. One of the most common causes for this problem is, again, Windows effing up resource allocation when it's building up the PCIe device hierarchy. Something that can be resolved, at least from all the tests I ran and everything I've read and seen about the situation, by fully uninstalling everything related to Thunderbolt from the system, forcing Windows to redo, to rebuild the whole structure from scratch. But because all these drivers are controlled, installed, and kept under the lock and key by Bootcamp Assistant, you can't do that. At least not in a way that doesn't threaten to corrupt the entire Bootcamp partition to begin with. If you would at least give us the option to tinker with those drivers specifically on bootcamp, it could very well solve the problem for about what, 90% or more of the people who are struggling with error 12. It's not going to be 100%. We know that because we know we still need Windows to actually clean up its own house, but it would already be a huge win. So, what to make of all this? Now, in 2020, with all these compatibility issues, troubleshooting going around, are eGPUs still a worthwhile and valid option? 
Well, first of all, I'd say if you are already on board and you already have an eGPU, be patient. If you're not 100% confident you can pull off these complicated steps and processes that people suggest to fix these issues, don't try it. The risk is just not worth it. For those of you who are not on the boat already and are thinking between, hey, I could go for an eGPU or a system that already has at least an acceptable level of graphics performance baked in. The ideal answer would even be, it depends, but it's beginning to feel like eGPUs have lost a bit of their pull which is incidentally the situation with my mini. The hardware is more than enough, but the internal graphics don't do the trick. Pair it with the core and a Vega 64, and it just chews through every graphics intensive workload I throw at it. It mows it, it's awesome. But to get to this point, I spent quite a bit of money. Today, looking back, since an eGPU plus a high-end graphics card will run you easily between 800 to 1200 bucks, I would personally probably go for an upgraded 16-inch MacBook Pro. It has more powerful internals, and even if the dedicated graphics card in it is technically not as powerful, I'm probably going to be getting comparable performance either way because of the limitations of Thunderbolt. So overall, the system would end up being actually better. Now, once Thunderbolt 4 arrives, the scenario will probably change a lot because there won't be, or at least there shouldn't be, any more graphics performance bottlenecking. But until that time, and maybe even then, what concerns me the most is how much attention software manufacturers are putting in to this whole thing to make the most out of it versus just compiling a shallow level of compatibility that's just enough to say it works, but leaving basically a nightmare for all the users to have to fix stuff and risk stability of their systems on their own when it was something that was supposed to have worked out of the box, plug and play with no issues. Right now, I'd say that the situation calls for caution more than anything. Be aware of all the pitfalls, because there are many. And unfortunately, I also have to strongly suggest you guys don't go for AMD GPUs for setups like those, because those are the ones who suffer the most in Windows with these issues. Now, if you're on the Mac side of the camp, as long as you're not building your setup specifically to go into bootcamp with an eGPU, these things can still be crazy good if you rather have that option for upgrades down the line without having to exchange the entire system. It's bad enough when you buy something that doesn't work, but when it doesn't work because of someone else who isn't even doing anything to actually fix the problem, that's just rubbing salt to injury. Anyway, that's been it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. So leave any comments or suggestions down below as usual. If you're feeling like it, share this video with anyone that you think might learn something or, you know, get something out of it. Check out all this other content as well that probably has nothing to do with today's topic. Again, big shout out to Wondershare for supporting the show and sponsoring today's video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you later.